Welcome to the Nightclub Guys, it's your host, The Night Wrencher. I get a lot of comments, mostly negative, about Holly carburetors. One of the more common complaints that I get is that these carburetors are very prone to leakage, and I want to go ahead and address some of those concerns right now. Because of the way the 4150s and their cousins are all assembled, the float bowls, metering blocks, and everything are assembled from the sides, and the only thing that gets bolted up and down is the base plate, which doesn't actually carry any kind of liquid fuel. So the fuel ends up sitting on the lower half of the carburetor, and it tends to cause a little bit of an issue. So we're going to go ahead and go through them one by one, along with some remedies of how to cure this. Probably the most common complaint that I see is that they leak out through the vent tubes. So the vent tubes on a Holly carburetor, if I turn it on to the side, you're going to see that it has this one that's right here, and the other one that's part of the choke assembly. What those do is they allow air to escape. So the way this works is that fuel gets fed through the inlet, whether it's a single feed or dual feed carburetor, the fuel bowl itself will change a little bit. So you have an inlet that feeds fuel through this passage that goes through the needle and seat, and it goes down and it gets controlled by this float. And when the float goes down, the passage opens, allows fuel to go in. When it gets to a certain point, the fuel will actually lift the float up, which will then close the needle and seat, which will prevent fuel from coming back in. So the issue that arises is even though this flow is supposed to stop the flow of fuel from completely flooding the motor, what will end up happening is that fuel will find its way into the bowl, overfill it, and then it will start coming out of the boosters. And then if it has enough pressure, it will continue filling it until it goes out through the vent tubes. There are several possibilities that could cause this problem on Holly carburetors. The most common reason that I see is that fuel pressure is much too high. Because of the way an Edelbrock carburetor is designed, it can handle way more fuel pressure than a Holly carburetor. So people assume that just because you were having no issues on an Edelbrock, you take that Edelbrock off and you put a Holly, you're running 8 PSI, 9 PSI, and all of a sudden your car's flooding, you can't get it to idle, and it's running weird, it's coughing, it's choking. The relationship between fuel pressure and fuel level is actually a very delicate balance. Too low of fuel pressure will actually make the car run lean, it'll have it stumble. Too high of fuel pressure, it'll make it choke. So the first thing you would need to check is to make sure that your fuel pressure is seven pounds or less. I like to keep mine closer to six, maybe five and a half pounds. I do have a fuel pressure regulator on all of my carbureted cars just to make sure I have everything dialed in. Just because your fuel pump is mechanical doesn't mean it can't overpressurize the carburetor. And in fact, I see it more often on mechanical fuel pumps than I do on electric fuel pumps designed for carburetors. Electric fuel pumps are designed to feed the same amount to pre-calibrate it into the electric motor versus a mechanical fuel pump that whatever the tolerances were designed in it, that's what's going to be pushed into the carburetor. And what I've noticed is that a lot of the aftermarket or off the shelf parts store fuel pumps, they're actually not calibrated to work well with the Holly carburetor and you end up having problems. I've had that problem with 351 Windsors, 318s, 360s, and even a 350 small block Chevy. All of them ended up being uh, too high of a fuel pressure. Now, if you've already checked the fuel pressure and you want to look for another culprit, look no further than the actual needle and seat itself. So a lot of people will point out that this needle, as part of the needle and seat assembly, when it gets dirty or when it gets old, it'll start to get uh, a groove or it'll start getting dirty because of whatever trash or anything that can get in between the seal of the needle and seat. The trash will hold the needle and seat just a hair open and that'll allow the fuel to actually bypass the needle and seat and overfill the carburetor. The second thing you want to look at on this needle and seat is this o-ring if it's worn or if it's hard or if it doesn't elevate past the body and it's not sealing up against the fuel bowl you're never going to get that carburetor to stop leaking whether it's through the boosters or through the vent tubes because that'll have a similar issue to the needle and seat the next thing you want to check is the o-ring so as you guys can see there's a small o-ring right above the needle and seat so more often than not, I actually notice that there's more problems with the O-ring itself than I do with the needle and seat assembly. And what will happen is this will allow fuel to bypass the entire assembly right into the fuel bowl. But it'll act like you have a bad needle and seat, but in reality, you just have a bad O-ring. More often than not, I notice that the O-ring is the culprit of overfilling the fuel bowls and the needle and seat assembly uh, is not typically the problem. People say that you can actually clean the needle to seat assemblies with mineral spirits, but what I've noticed is that when you do that, you're actually sort of swelling the O-ring, and maybe that's what's actually causing the repair. 
and allowing you to continue using it. But typically, I always replace the O-ring, even if it's somewhat of a newer O-ring. These O-rings tend to shrink really, really fast. So uh, after you've already cleaned out your needle and seat assembly, go ahead and find a new O-ring for this. You should be able to find them online. Another problem associated with leaking through the vent tubes is leaking through the booster assembly itself. Maybe it'll be idling, you look down the throat and you have fuel dripping down or fuel going into the carburetor. And a lot of times that has a lot to do with what I just spoke to you guys about with the vent tubes. But another problem that I noticed that it could also be is that you have these air bleeds right here. You have these bleeds up on top of the carburetor that allow air into the system and prevent vacuum from being pulled on the entire system and only allowing fuel to flow whenever it's uh, required by the carburetor. You shouldn't have any kind of fuel flowing or dripping at idle. If anything, you should only be getting fuel from the boosters when you're into the main jets, and that's usually when you're out on the street. You can get into the main jets if you increase the throttle high enough, but typically you're not revving it high enough to be able to activate the boosters anyway. Same thing goes for the vacuum secondaries. You can't really activate them at idle. You'll only really notice it when you're out on the road, which means you really shouldn't have any fuel flowing from these at all when you're checking out your carburetor in the driveway. So like I said, fuel flowing out through here could be that the level is too high, but it could also be that the bleeds themselves are actually blocked off. Because the air bleeds are blocked, the only relief for the fuel bowl is through the vent tube. And so the booster is going to keep pulling fuel as long as air gets through the vent tube. So a lot of times when you notice that you have a blocked air bleed, you can actually take your finger and block the vent tube and fuel will actually stop dripping because there's nowhere for fuel to have that relief of pressure from. As soon as you take your finger off, fuel will start to get pulled back in and that'll tell you that you have a plugged uh, air bleed. Those are super easy to clean out. If you take the fuel bowl and the metering block assembly off, you can actually spray carb cleaner on these two holes on either side of the booster entry right here. So you have the big hole for the booster and you have the little hole for the bleeds. You spray uh, carb cleaner one way and then you spray it the other way. If you get a clean spray on each one of these holes, that should be a clear indicator that everything is working well on this carburetor. Just remember to wear eye protection because if you don't spray this correctly, it's going to come back and hit you in the face. So make sure you spray that correctly. Another common leakage point on these carburetors are these accelerator pumps. So when these accelerator pumps get old, they get really crusty and they get really brittle. So if it's carburetor has been sitting for a year or more, and maybe sometimes not even that, depending on the fuel, these assemblies will get dried out, they'll get cracked. And as soon as you start uh, putting them back into service, you're going to break the diaphragms and you're gonna get fuel coming out of this hole right here because this has a direct entry into the diaphragm. You break that diaphragm, you're gonna be leaking fuel from here. That being said, if the seal on the sides of the accelerator pump start getting damaged, you're going to start seeing fuel either from the bolt holes themselves or from the sealing surface on the side. The cure for that is to just replace the accelerator pump. Oftentimes when you have a leak like that on the diaphragm of the accelerator pump, you're going to have a hard time starting it when it's cold because when you go to pump it, the fuel is actually just going to leave the diaphragm instead of going all the way through the carburetor and exiting the squirters it's just going to go out through the diaphragm so as soon as you go to start the car and you accelerate all the fuel is going to leave through here and you're actually not going to be able to get any fuel inside the throat a lot of these oe carburetors use paper gaskets for the bolts and what they do is that when you have the bolts tightening down on the body you have this paper seal that's supposed to hold everything together. If you've reused them too many times or if they dried out or they get hard, when it's time to tighten these up and seal it, uh, these paper gaskets won't seal anymore. So what you have to actually do is you'll take a razor blade and you'll actually remove them from the bolt and you'll actually go and clean the surface of where the seal actually seals. And what that'll do is that'll give the new seal a nice fresh surface for it to sit. Some of the newer carburetors and even some of the rebuild kits come with nylon seals and those will work great, but the same rules still apply. Your bolt has to be clean and the bolt surface has to be clean as well. If you have dirt or pieces of debris like this one right here on it, a nylon gasket is gonna be able to seal less 
and then a paper gasket. So for the nylon gaskets, these surfaces have to be pretty pristine. So I do like the paper gaskets, but I do tend to clean my carburetors whenever I tear them apart. So a nylon gasket is a good solution as well. Oftentimes people will try to cure these leaks by over tightening these bolts. And what will happen is maybe it'll cure the leak because you're getting more pressure on that seal. But oftentimes you will actually pull the threads out of the main body and then you have a junk main body. You're going to be spending some money on a thread insert tool, drilling out the main body and then installing some sort of helicoil. I've never actually pulled the threads on a main body. When I notice that I'm putting a little too much pressure, I will just back off and just check everything because it really doesn't take much pressure at all for you to get a nice clean seal on it. Once I notice that things start getting wet or moist, I will tear it apart, look at it, and if I have any gasket or gasket surfaces that are a little bit questionable, I go ahead and repair that and I'm on my way. I usually don't have any issues unless the carburetor's been sitting for over a year. If we go ahead and look at the top part of this fuel bowl, you guys will remember that I was talking about the needle and seat earlier. And another common leak is that on the needle and seat assembly, it'll have two gaskets, one on top of this nut and then one below this nut. And what will happen is that either one or both will wear out because of too many adjustments or you just weren't careful or it got torn or it got old or it got brittle. And what will happen is that these seals will actually break or they'll rip because they are paper. And because they're paper seals, you can just go ahead and get new paper seals and put them on and tighten them back up. But sometimes when you go ahead and put the new seals, the leak won't get fixed. And from what I've noticed is that it could be a combination of a couple things. So the first thing you want to go ahead and check out is you're going to want to remove the needle and seat completely and look at the mating surface of the fuel bowl itself. If you notice any kind of gashes here or any kind of nubs or anything holding it up, you want to make sure this is a nice flat surface. If anything, get a, a piece of sandpaper on a wooden block and just kind of just rub it back and forth to make sure it's a nice flat surface. If everything looks good, move on to the next step, which is actually take a look at the nut and look for the same thing. If the nut is questionable with too many ridges or damaged or nicks or anything on the ceiling surface, you want to go ahead and look into replacing that nut or at least finding another one to test it. And the last thing you want to look is on the top part. And if you look at the top of the needle and seat, you'll notice that you have the same type of gasket. And in fact, it's probably the same exact size where it seals up against the bolt. Now, there's one extra thing you want to look at when you're looking at these bolts. And I actually just ran into one of these problems like two weeks ago. So my dad actually bought a Barry Grant carburetor that had a stripped out needle and seat. My dad ended up buying a replacement fuel bowl and we put it on and we put everything back together. We transferred the flow and everything that was on it onto the new flow bowl. And from that day forward, we always had some sort of leak at the top of the carburetor. And we actually ended up dealing with that for many, many years up until about two weeks ago when I started going through it. We had actually played with different types of gasket, doubling up on gaskets, playing with sealing, trying to get that thing to seal. And we just couldn't get it. I would I checked out the sealing surfaces and everything was fine. So what I ended up finding out was as I was putting the needle and seat back in, I had it adjusted all the way down that it was supposed to. And I was actually screwing it in. But what I was noticing is that as I got closer, the spacing between the nut and the bolt would change depending on how much I turned it. So it would have a little bit of spacing and I would turn it and it would have a lot of spacing. I would keep turning it, a little bit of spacing, keep turning it, a lot of spacing. And I actually pulled it back out to look at it and it turns out that the head of that bolt was machined wrong. It was machined crooked. It had a little bit of a twist to it. So when it would come down and bite up against this paper gasket, only half of the adjustment bolt was holding onto the gasket and the other one was just barely off contact on the gasket. And that's what was making it dribble out of the gasket. I went ahead and I pulled that Barry Grant bolt off and I grabbed the Holly one uh, that I made sure it was square and I went ahead and I installed it on the needle and seat and that ended up curing all the issues. So what I figured was the carburetor actually had a factory defect with that bolt. The owner couldn't figure it out and he kept tightening it and tightening it and tightening it until he stripped out that fuel bowl after he stripped out that fuel bowl he sold the carburetor because he couldn't figure it out once it was in our possession when we switched everything over including the needle and seat assembly uh, that's when we started noticing that we had issues and we had had issues until we figured it out so sometimes it's not cut and dry that you're just looking at just one specific
specific part to replace. Sometimes it goes a little bit deeper than that. This type of leak is not as prevalent and that's probably due to the way these uh, gaskets are designed is that these have paper gaskets on the front and on the back of the metering blocks. And what will happen is these will dry out. Same thing as all the other gaskets. They will crack and they will start leaking. But I've had really, really old gaskets and I've been able to soak the metering block in fuel and then install it and it's been able to run fine. It's only when you pull the, the metering block off and the gasket rips onto the main body and actually has a tear, that's when you start having leakage problems. So if you guys can actually take off all the material with like a plastic scraper, try not to damage the surfaces, you should be able to put a new paper gasket. Sometimes you won't be able to get all the material off and what you'll have to do is actually put a new gasket on there, run it, hope it doesn't leak and then just keep running it and keep driving on it. So whenever you go do some maintenance down the road and you go ahead and replace a gasket that you had to go in ahead and put in there, what will happen is that the old gasket will stick to the newer gasket and when you actually go to replace it, you'll be able to remove whatever was left on there and you should be able to put an even newer gasket on there and that should be fixed. One less common issue that you might have on these carburetors is that these throttle shafts will end up leaking probably right here on the side. And in fact, all of these Holly carburetors tend to have a little bit of seepage right there. You can just spray it off with some carb cleaner when the engine is off, let it dry off and it should be fine. You, you'll be able to clean that back up. It's kind of normal to have a little bit of seepage. Some carburetors have these nylon inserts into the main body and some of them have brass inserts that will have, help seal the carburetor uh, and prevent it from leaking to the outside. What ends up happening is that fuel from the main jets will end up pooling on top of the throttle assembly and then from there it'll just find its way out and it'll start leaking out the sides. If it gets to the point where it's just leaking like crazy or if, if you move the throttle up and down or if you have some play in the base plate and the idle changes, that means that the entire bore is completely worn out and you'll either have to put in a brass insert yourself or replace the base plate. Typically when it gets that bad, you'll either have a problem with too high of an idle, too low of an idle, or a lean condition, and that's because air is being bypassed through the throttle shaft instead of through the uh, primaries, and then you're gonna start having issues at low RPMs and idle. This particular base plate does have quite a bit of play in the shaft. Everything feels a little bit loose. As you guys can see here, the secondaries can be completely moved with any kind of tension and I can move it side to side. So this definitely has to be repaired. So the most common leak that I've seen on Holly carburetors is the connection between the chrome fuel logs or the fuel rail to the adapter that goes into the fuel bowl. And what will happen is you'll buy these parts store fuel rails and you'll take the nut and you'll go ahead and tighten it up against the body. You'll replace the seal. Sometimes you'll even replace these adapter nuts. And no matter how much you tighten it or how much sealing you use on the threads, you'll still get a dribble down the middle. And that's probably why people get so upset with these carburetors is that no matter what they do, they'll always have a leak on these carburetors. What I noticed is that it's not a common problem just to the parts store fuel rails. It's a common problem to all fuel rails that use this type of compression connection. What I've noticed and I've started using and I haven't stopped using since I figured it out is I've actually switched over to a different type of connection. So these nuts are actually for AN lines or AN fittings and the back side is made to go into the standard Holly inlets and the other side is supposed to go into a dash six or a dash eight uh, AN line. And what these AN lines are, they're similar to like JIC fittings, but these are aluminum and they have the same tapered style fitting, but it has a cone instead of like a flange where it would actually tighten up against. And these are actually super, super tight. They don't require any kind of sealant. And once you get this thing tight, I haven't had a single AN line leak as long as I torqued it properly. Obviously, if you leave it loose, it is going to leak. And what these do is that they take the place of these standard chrome style off the shelf adapters and you can take those off and you and use the same gasket and install these in its place. And sometimes you do need to clearance these out so they'll fit certain fuel bowls. But after you go ahead and install these and you get these nice and tight, you can go ahead and buy yourself a good fuel rail with AN style fittings. And when you go to install this, you can just go ahead and tighten them up with like a 17 or 11 16 or maybe it's even 18 millimeter wrench. 
once you go ahead and have this installed, you install it on both sides nice and loose, and then you go ahead and tighten it up. Once you've got this tightened up, you will never, ever have a leak on these carburetors ever again. This is probably the most frustrating leak to get over, and but once you switch over to these fuel rails, working on Holly carburetors becomes a breeze. You can get these adapters in not only standard Holly sizes, but you can even get them to the smaller Demon sizes, and it fits exactly the same. So that's about it. Hope this helps. I'll see you guys all in the next one. Night Wrencher, out.